Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Amy Holder, and I am the New Jersey State Manager for Security Title. I will be your moderator for this presentation. Before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Attendees are in listen-only mode, but if you have a question, please say hi in either the question or chat box. Or you may click the raise hand button if you are familiar with the dashboard. Today, we are excited to have Fritz Lesher join us on this webinar. Fritz is the head of business development for Axions North America. Fritz began his career in software, bridging the gap between technology and user experience for a number of decades. He spent 10 years working with Title Fusion, AccuTitle, followed by six years at Action Title Research. In these roles, Fritz was, has worked with hundreds of title agencies, providing support and guidance on how to simplify technology to agents of all sizes. We are excited to learn about how our agents can better protect themselves through his expertise. I proudly present Fritz Lesher. Thank you, Amy. Um, just a quick overview of um, how I got into this. Uh, after spending all of those years in Title, working with Title software platforms, working with Title research, and how uh, it gets transmitted digitally into software platforms. I worked with a number of title agencies of all different sizes, and one thing was pretty consistent, and that um, was that the, the concerns over cybersecurity are growing and growing quickly, and there is a bit of uh, confusion over what actions to take and what people can do to get better and to make improvements um, to the security profile over time. So I immersed myself in this topic for a number of months and really got discouraged at many points because it was so technical and there was little translation into what your average title agency can take with them and actually do and show show progress and feel like they're they're on top of this and making uh, making the strides they need to to stay to stay up to date and to stay safe. So hopefully this presentation is going to help everyone to get some clarity on that, give you some ideas on what you can do to take action uh, and understand a little bit about what some of the tools and technologies are out there to help you. Um, so as an introduction, um, we're going to cover some basics of, you know, business side versus technology side, how to start on the cybersecurity journey and keep it going, um, how to maintain focus on the top priorities, um, process and procedures are always a part of the equation. And uh, a new term that you may not be familiar with is vulnerability management. So I'm gonna get into vulnerability management and how that can be used to tie this together and to help people on their journey and to keep it a regular part of uh, their their activities of protecting their, their business. Um, Great. So in summary, you know, this is a journey, it's not a destination. Um, so, like exercise and a healthy diet, um, cyber defense is continual. It's not something you do and walk away from. It's expected of all of us to incorporate this into everything we do all the time to make sure that everyone's aware um, and that we are applying best, best practices to protect the business. Um, the difference is that some components can be automated for you, they can be made easier, and there are a lot of um, tools, technologies, and services out there to help uh, help agents get better and make progress. Uh, there are also headwinds, and we're gonna talk about some of those. So, you know, the first question is always, where are you on your journey? Because every title agency is different. You have different size agents, you have different numbers of employees, different title software platforms, different mortgage lenders that you work with that have different requirements. Um, so there is a need to assess where you are on your journey and it can be confusing. Hopefully we'll remove some of that mystery. Um, awareness has been, I think, beaten into all of our heads and that is both a good thing and a bad thing in my opinion. Uh, we absolutely need awareness to cybersecurity threats. Uh, we need to be vigilant and stay on top of these things. Uh, but on the flip side, it's overwhelming, right? Like how much more can we be aware without knowing what we can do about it? And up on the screen, I just have some examples 
that these are all recent, just within the last few weeks of, you know, sextortion scams are back. Um, those are scams where someone emails you with what seems to be very private personal information, a picture of your house or things that they, they tell you, we know who you are and we have information on you and we're going to share it unless you do this, right? So those are coming back. Um, critical password warning, 86% of all routers need to, need to act, uh, router users need to act now. Well, we all have a router. This one turns out was a bit of clickbait. Um, it's 86% of all router users of a particular make and model, um, not everybody in the world, um, but these headlines are everywhere. Microsoft Windows, critical vulnerability of 72 hours to update your PC. So these things are out there. Um, we have to be aware of them. We have to make an effort to stay on top of things, um, but we also have to avoid um, becoming numb to it because there is so much of that. Sure. Another issue is that it can be technical. Um, when I first started asking questions about cybersecurity and how can it be applied uh, in the title industry, this was one of the webinar descriptions that I that I joined. Um, and right in the first sentence, you have SASE, CASB, ZTNA, SWG. All of these terms was it was completely overwhelming. Um, it did not provide a top level sort of business discussion of how to approach this and, and, and what steps to take. It was very focused on point solutions and you really don't get down to point solutions um, until you have an understanding of the, of the whole environment. So I know that's a headwind. I've experienced it myself. Um, cybersecurity in general can be confusing in terms of what to do and whether that will actually benefit your business. Um, so there are there are best practices, there are guidelines and standards, there are templates for doing certain things, um, there are tools, there are technologies, there are all these things. Which ones are applicable to your business? Which ones are the things that are gonna make you move forward? That can be confusing. Hopefully, we're gonna uh, address some of that today. All right. And finally, resource constraints, right? So. Everybody has resource constraints. We don't have the time. We may not have the technology know-how or the technology people to help with this. Um, and budget concerns are always an issue. So we have to navigate these headwinds. They're, they're out there, um, but we can't let them keep us from making progress, right? So you know, don't let them prevent you from taking action. Um, you can reduce risks and you can make real improvements. Uh, and there is help available uh, to help you along this journey. So, Amy, if you had any Great. questions about the setup here, if not, yeah, I think I think we're good. Let's get into the meat. Yeah, I'll just dive get to right. The, in. the nitty gritty. Yeah. So, in terms of diving in, um, assessing risk and charting your course, you know, your your priorities and risk assessment, you have to start somewhere. And my recommendation is to start with a self-assessment from a business level, a self-assessment from a technology level, and then perhaps ask a third party to come in and evaluate where you are, what your thoughts are, what your top concerns are, and what the best approach is um, for making progress. And I'm later on in this presentation, I'm gonna tell you what I think the best approach is after going through a number of these presentations, there, there is a standout of what the first step could be and in many cases should be. Great. Um, so in terms of you know, what to protect, you've, you're expected to protect your hardware, your software, your network, your people, your information. Um, information being you know, databases of information, customer lists, financial records, et cetera. Um, and all of those things go into protecting your reputation and maintaining resilience in the event that some sort of a cyber event occurs. And it is, is you know, sometimes it is a, um, a malicious threat. Sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes it's an act of nature. Um, so, you know, protection covers all of those bases. So this is really about higher level what do you do to kind of uh, evaluate your technology landscape and protect it better? Um, how to protect. 
this is a deep dive. I'm not going to go into this. It comes from a, you know, a, a presentation where we have more time to dive in, um, but it is something that I've used to work through each one of these categories. Um, and it can be applied to just about any topic in cybersecurity that you want to talk about at the business level. Um, and it's paperwork, protections, priorities, and people, right? So when it comes to hard work, hardware, there is paperwork involved. Um, companies are expected to have a hardware inventory of what they own, right? That is paperwork in a sense. Um, there are protections related to hardware. One of them is antivirus. And unfortunately, it is the, um, it's, in many cases, it's the only thing that is standing in the way uh, of, of bad actors and your business. Um, so you can kind of do a quick overview of each of these areas and just kind of ask yourself, you know, is there paperwork I need to have in place? Are there protections I have in place already or things that I'm thinking about? What are the priorities here? And who are the people that I rely on to help me answer questions and to help me move forward uh, with a protected business? Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to deal with change, right? Because none of the solutions are perfect. Uh, everything is changing always, um, but you can't protect what you don't know about. So that's why I start with an assessment. That's why everyone should start with an assessment it's understanding what you know and identifying things that perhaps you don't know much about. Um, and then regardless of what you know, you have to be protected and you have to be pro proactive. You're expected to understand your IT environment and your security posture. Um, I have visibility there, meaning you're expected to know at some level, have some visibility into what you're doing and how you're protecting your organization. Um, and you're expected to take risks, take steps to reduce risks and to do that on an ongoing basis. Um, so, you know, how do we do that? You know, we have to know where we stand. So one of the, the, the steps in risk assessment and setting your priorities is documenting what you already know, document your IT environment, identify top questions and concerns, um, Many of them might be gut questions. Many of them might be spurred on by things that have happened in the office that lead you to asking a question. Uh, write it down, make sure it's part of your plan and make sure that you're thinking about it and asking questions to, to people to, to fill in the gaps. So you can clarify uh, who does what and you can take action and you can demonstrate progress to the industry, to your customers and so forth. So that kind of summarizes the assessment stage. And then we're going to go into, you know, how do we manage IT resources at a business Chris, level without getting technical? Yes. Chris, be before you do that, you noted that maintaining visibility into what you own and how it's being used as a priority. Can you just elaborate a little bit on that, please? Yes. And, and it, it's, it can be different for every agency because of the the age and the size of your title agency comes into play so if you are a brand new agency you've been in business maybe a couple of years you may not not have the same confusion as to what hardware and software you own and how it's configured and who set it up and so forth but as you grow and as time goes by um you may have things connected to your network that you don't even know about. And I've seen it many times. Um, Makes sense. That, and and those, anything that is connected to your network and that is connected to your business environment or any device that someone uses in, as part of their daily business routine in conducting business um, is, is your responsibility. And so having visibility into what you own and to what state of health those things are in is extremely important. So, so visibility into this stuff is a requirement. The question is, you know, how do we get better visibility so that we can start addressing things and, uh, and fixing problems? So does that answer the question? It does, much, it does, thank you. Great. So managing IT resources, um, again, this is another 
deep dive that I'm going to keep at a very high level. But the main message is keeping it organized goes hand in hand with keeping it protected. Um, and organization, these are some categories that are top of my mind. Uh, there could be others, of course, but an IT budget, an IT, you know, IT inventory, who are your IT service providers? Who is your IT staff, whether they are uh, officially IT staff or whether they act as the, the um, in-house sort of go-to technology person? There's, there's a wide variety of, of staff roles that play into uh, managing IT and cybersecurity. And there are IT business priorities, which could change and evolve. And an example of that might be that you're changing your title software platform and you know in 2025 so if you have major um, priorities that you know you're embarking on in the coming months or coming year it's important to build that into your cybersecurity profile and to know how it impacts the other areas and so again good good it hygiene is good it security um, so all of these areas need to be looked at from a business perspective and you need to establish a baseline for each one for where you know where you are and in order to demonstrate that you are practicing good hygiene the, some of the expectations and some of what's right cybersecurity relies on is patch and update management biggest one out there is you know are your systems up to date are do they have the latest patches um, settings and configuration management, another really big one. Um, user permissions and access rights. You have policies and procedures that you expect your employees to follow and for everybody to be on the same page. Uh, and you have oversight, training, and support to make sure that these, these practices and these awareness campaigns are sinking in and people are um, you know, continually acting responsibly where they can. And so the summary here is again to keep it non-technical and just to do a gut business level review of your budget your inventory your providers your staff and your priorities and be prepared to talk about your cybersecurity efforts in all of those areas and you know I, I would say it's 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 like an elevator pitch so if you do not have an elevator pitch for each of these categories work on it and see what comes to mind when you are trying to say, all right, for my IT budget, uh, are, am I grossly underspending on cybersecurity? Am I grossly overspending on cybersecurity? Do I not really have visibility into my IT expenses in terms of how they translate into what I'm doing for cybersecurity, right? So if, if, you, if you can answer that question in sort of an elevator pitch fashion, you have a, you have a, a good place to start. If you're confused, then it's an area to, to say, you know what, I need to dig into my budget. Maybe I need to organize it better, categorize things better, et cetera. And the same goes for all of these. So the message here is to be prepared to talk about it and identify the, the risks of bad hygiene. So you can recognize bad hygiene in your own environment. We all can with not a whole lot of effort, but I'm going to go over ways to, to really recognize it better and to help you. Um, but take a crack at it yourself, do a self-assessment, perhaps get somebody to help you do an assessment um, by an independent third party, but get everyone on the same page of where, where you are and where you want to go when it comes to cybersecurity and making improvements. Great. Um, you mentioned another priority that you called establishing a baseline. Can you just explain a little bit about what you mean by that? Yes, of course. So a baseline in a sense is what you're doing now and articulating what you're doing now, right? So you can't say I'm going to make a change if you're not really sure where point A is and where point B is, right? So so establishing a baseline is looking at these categories and saying, all right, do I have an IT budget and am I, am I comfortable with it? Um, you will establish a baseline that's either yes, no, or somewhere in between. 
um, IT inventory, do you have a record of all of the hardware assets that you own and that people use to do business for your company every day? Um, if the answer is an easy yes, then you can move on. But if you're not so sure, um, then you have a baseline that says, well, I know I have these things, but I'm really not sure about these eight computers that were bought six years ago and we had employee turnover and you know some things may have disappeared. Um, so, so the baseline is, is where you are now and it's an honest look at what you're doing now and that is your baseline, that's your starting point. So it's, it, it's tied back to the self-assessment. Great, thank you for that explanation. Sure. And so next we're gonna get into action items, right? So, you know, action changes things. And one of the problems that we have is not knowing where to take action, how to take action, or whether the actions that you're thinking about are actually going to make a difference in the business. Um, there's lots of talk out there. It's very confusing, like we said before. So we're gonna go over one of the ways of taking action is something we call vulnerability management, which is identifying and mitigating IT vulnerabilities continuously. Um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what that is, how it works, and how it can be implemented pretty quickly and easily. So what is vulnerability management? It is an ongoing process of identifying known exploited vulnerabilities and addressing them before they impact your business. Um, so vulnerabilities are weaknesses in an IT system or in a piece of hardware or in a piece of firmware that allow an attacker to successfully exploit the, a system and its data, right? It can be controls, configurations, operating systems, applications, all sorts of things. Even, even features of some software create vulnerabilities by design right so so and it's inevitable sometimes you need to you need to do things that are risky <laughs> and software helps you right. do them faster <laughs> and and that can sometimes be an issue um, but it's not an issue if you know about it if you understand the risks and you've done what you can to to mitigate those risks and to watch over things so that if it does become a problem you know about it early on um, and one of the one of the issues in the industry is the name vulnerability management it's not very sexy you know cybersecurity is used everywhere now everybody knows that term but even the cybersecurity experts will argue over whether cybersecurity should be used or information security should be used because they can be slightly different um, i think the general consensus now is that everybody says cybersecurity um, but information security is really a little bit more accurate because it's not just about thieves it's about mistakes it's about you know hygiene it's you know there, there are a lot of other things that can compromise your business that are not directly related to out, outside threats and you know criminals at the door of course there are tons of those um, but there are a lot of other things that prevent opportunities um, for those criminals to do what they want to do. And um, vulnerability management is the term that I'm using. When I first started learning about these things, people were talking to me about endpoint protection, endpoint detection and response, extended detection and response. These are terms you might use. I, you know, I committed to keep this non-technical, um, so I'm not going to right. use them. But this, you know, this is what makes it so so difficult to figure it out. There are all different terms, there are different companies, different tools, technologies, um, and it can get very confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Um, Great. Vulnerabilities pile up over time, right? So, so without a doubt, vulnerabilities exist, and most organizations can only remediate one out of every 10 per month. So that means they're building up. And vulnerabilities building up means that there are more open windows and open doors to your business um, at the technology level that are could potentially let people in uh, to do nefarious things. Um, so what's the remedy to that? The remedy is that these vulnerabilities can be spotted and they can be acted upon. 
Um, and there, there are agents, we, we call them agents. These agents are tools and services to help protect computers and devices. They're security agents. Um, they're things that get installed on a, a device and they provide protections against uh, threats and they, they give you information to help you make decisions about what to change and what to fix. Um, so it's very similar to, I'm gonna make the analogy a lot between um, a check engine light and, and automobiles and uh, a ring camera. Uh, my guess is that most people on this call, or at least a number of people on this call, have uh, a ring camera or some sort of security camera on their home. And almost all of us have a check engine light if we're driving a relatively modern car. Um, and that check engine light is linked to onboard diagnostics. So in the old days, when you took your car in to get fixed, you described the problem. <laughs> you made sounds of what it was doing, right? And you, you know, oh, so this yeah. is squeaking, this is, and, and you, you had to describe it to a mechanic to get them to fix it. Well, nowadays they just plug a computer into your, into your onboard diagnostics and they get the readings, right? And, and so if you take that and apply it to your business, if, if, if every computer device is a vehicle, um, you know, do you have these onboard diagnostics on those vehicles? And are you checking your fleet to make sure that regular maintenance and, um, and safety is, is being addressed on those vehicles? Um, and anyone that owns a fleet of trucks or vehicles would know that that management maintenance is a critical component um, to operating a profitable business. Um, and then when it comes to the ring cameras, that's more like watching at the outside world, um, or in, in, in the case of cars, it's, it's uh, you know, collision warning, it's blind spot detectors, right? They're, they're, they have tools to help you identify things that could impact safety and to help you act on it. And in some cases, it is um, after the fact, but we want to be ahead of the problem. So this is about managing managing threats before they occur. And if they do occur, having the ability to go back and review what happened, how did it happen and make adjustments. And so these, these vulnerability agents, they connect to a database of known threats and they look at your computer and they, they see whether those threats are um, in, and vulnerabilities are on your computer. So antivirus looks for viruses. They look for signatures and fingerprints. They don't look for everything. They don't look for vulnerabilities. They don't look for settings that a user might have taken their computer and messed around with configurations and settings that open the computer up to, to the outside world and, and, and to threats. Um, you know, antivirus would tell you after it happens. Um, but vulnerability agents, they look ahead and they protect you in advance. And what they also do is they report up to a central console, right? So every device is monitored for security vulnerabilities and the health status is tracked and reported over time. So when you issue a computer to an employee, you may know that it's protected at the time you hand it over to them. What about six, seven, eight months down the road? What has gone on on that computer and are you on top of it? Well, vulnerability scanners and agents, they help you to keep, to, to keep on top of that by by monitoring and reporting that up to a central console. Um, when new vulnerabilities are detected, it provides um, details on what was found, what's the severity level, and they give you instructions on how to fix the issue. So they're not just telling you what we found, they're saying this is what you can do about it and here are the steps you can take to fix that problem. Um, and then finally, when you do fix them, they're checked off a list and they're tracked. So it's similar to a Fitbit in that regard, in that you're getting on this program of evaluating, monitoring your, your, your security and vulnerabilities, and you're also get, getting proof that you are addressing them and fixing them and, and, and viewing them over time to maintain uh, protection. So why use a provider? Because these tools, there, there are lots of tools available. Yeah, go ahead. But real quick, I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned that um, 
you're recommending the use of security agents to help identify and fix these IT vulnerabilities. Is this a new technology? And is it something that your company has developed? Good question. And no and no. So uh, these vulnerability agents have been used for many, many years. The issue is that they are they have been used for primarily the largest companies in the world, right? There, there was an issue when they first came out where it's a, it's a very inexpensive solution. And in order to make that into a business, you've got to sell thousands of licenses, right? So that was done years ago. And industries and, and companies around the world have been using these scanners for years. It is how our team got familiar with them. And we managed um, vulnerabilities for uh, large companies in New Jersey and in different states. Um, so, so we were in charge of protecting their, their equipments for, you know, sometimes it's one department, sometimes it's an entire building, uh, and sometimes it's, they have multiple sites around the world and they want everybody to be, um, you know, working on the same platform. So we have, we have experience with the tools. They've been around for a long time. We did not develop it, but we chose a tool that we think works the best, um, in an environment for small and medium-sized businesses. Um, and so, unfortunately, there was some, there was some <laughs> bad results. And if, if, if people remember in July of this year, when about half the, the, uh, the PCs in the, in the world went down, and uh, I was walking through an airport at the time, and every airport screen uh, in the airport was just the blue, the blue screen of death. Um, that points back, not, really to it, it certainly points back to cybersecurity, but that was not a security threat that was actually um an indication of how many people use vulnerability scanners right now because that was at the core of what happened in that problem and i, I don't want to go into the details of what that problem was but if they had that blue screen to death they were using a vulnerability agent to scan and protect their systems so it's not new and it's not something we developed, but we do have the expertise of implementing these solutions and helping companies on their journey um, to protecting their organizations and to getting better over time. Great. Right. Thank so, you for that. So you can improve cybersecurity without a lot of technology drain on, on your internal resources. Um, you can manage your vulnerabilities continually without a, without a lot of effort. Um, and they're highly customizable and, ex and extendable. Um, so back to the ring camera um, example or analogy, ring cameras are also evolving. Uh, it may, you may look at two ring cameras or I'm using ring, but it could be any type of security camera. Uh, and you can, build, you can build new features into them. Um, they have pet recognition, they have face re facial recognition, right? So some of them just record. Uh, other ones will actually have intelligence built into them uh, to do more things and more sophisticated things. It's the same with these vulnerability agents. They can be extended, um, but they are easy to get started and to take um, take the first step. It's not not a big load. Great. Now we're going to get into what it looks like, and here's the hard part because <laughs> because you don't want to see it, right? It's it. It is meant to be invisible. It's meant to not interrupt your users, not interrupt your workflow. It works in the background um, and it needs to be monitored, but it is not something that users need to be involved with. Um, here is a sample of a report that comes from a, from a vulnerability agent. Um, so this here, it provides a summary of vulnerabilities were, that were found within this bank of computers that were scanned. Um, and you'll see here, it found 219 active vulnerabilities on the computers. Of those 219, 24 are considered severe. Um, 105 are considered, you know, almost severe. They're pretty bad. Um, so you can see how the, what it finds, it ranks them for you. Um, it tells you what categories they come in. Local means it's something that the, com that the computer user did themselves on their local computer. 
office application means it's it's how your office 365 was set up and configured um, it may not have um, the right permission settings and so forth uh, again same with windows your windows operating system it found 21 um, issues with window operating system and security policy those are those are kind of things that you just ask the question do i you know do i want this to happen in my environment and an example of that might be like auto running videos when you visit a website you know that can potentially introduce security risks it's not really that huge of a deal but it is a deal and it's you know sort of listed as a as a as a lower pro probability of of getting um threat so you get these reports once you install these scanners you get reports and then you get your little fitbit tracker which you know this this is the day that it was installed right so you install this these agents on a batch of computers and it gives an immediate reading and it shows you what um you know what it found and how to fix them but as you go through time this will track what you've fixed what you've corrected um, so you'll be able to demonstrate to customers and to regulators that you are on top of things and that you are making progress. And of course, new vulnerabilities come about every single day. Those new vulnerabilities are logged, they're verified and logged at a national and even an international level. Um, and then the vulnerability scanners tap into those latest threats. So they'll look, you know, they, they're always looking for the latest threats on your computers. And that you know that that's kind of where the term a zero day a zero day exploit a zero day exploit means that you know how long has the world known about this threat zero days so there Hi. really is nothing you can do about a zero day exploit you know that's that's the point that's why the zero days are so dangerous however there are hundreds of thousands of exploits that have been around for weeks, months, or even years. And those are the ones that you're expected to be on top of and to know about and to correct. And this gives you a way to identify them and fix them. And it will also, you know, what are the most popular ones on this particular scan? Well, there were some Windows stuff. Uh, Zoom, that's a big one, we find it everywhere. Um, so many people installed Zoom back during the COVID days and then just left it on their, comp their, on their machines. A um, few months later, there was a major security flaw with Zoom and everyone was told to remove it and reinstall it. Most people did not. It's still sitting on their computers. These agents will pick that up and that's a real easy fix. Just go and uninstall it and you've made progress and you can demonstrate that progress. That might actually be a a um a clue or a hint to the agents that are listening if you have zoom and you installed it in 2020 uninstall it <laughs> get it off of there yep all right and chances are you know it, it may not be a threat just sitting on the computer but if you get invited to a zoom meeting and you forget and you launch it you know that might be when it when it kicks in sure. so Again, it's, it's identifying what you can do and what you can take action on and just do it and and be able to show that you're doing it because um, everybody's right. at a different place. So you, you get reports, right? So you get reports that identify what's on your devices. So of the hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities, you know, how the heck do you know, well, what's what which of those apply to my environment and my computers and my people? Well, these agents will tell you that. They'll look at your computers and say, yeah, you have this. This is this is on your PC, get rid of it. Um, it will rank them according to severity, like we discussed. So just like hurricanes, they're ranked from one to five. And if you got a bunch of fives, you know where to look um, and you know what to act on. So it helps you with, with setting your priorities. Um, and most importantly, it gives you detailed instructions on how to fix the vulnerabilities. Um, so this is where, you know, a lot of knowledge base has been consolidated into these databases. So they know the problems, they know how to find them, they know how to fix them, and then they can tell you the steps on what to do to fix them. Great. So this, I'm going to, this is kind of just the features, it's kind of just repeats that, you know, you're, you're scanning for them, you're, you're, 
reporting on them, you're getting the rankings, you're getting instructions. And then this list goes on and on with different things that you can turn on. Um, I'm not gonna go there in this short webinar, but just know that these things can be extended. Um, another anal car analogy there would be, you know, if you buy a Tesla, um, they have that, what is that summon feature where you can summon your car to come pick you up at the, at you know, at the doorstep. Um, cool. you know, that that you know that may be in your car if you own a tesla but you might not have turned it on because it there's an extra fee for it right so so all of these things have have features and functions that could be turned on and they're usually done in batches that make sense um and and one one extension is you know the initial vulnerability scanner protects the device that it's on but you can actually turn on and extend that so it goes out and it hunts and does active threat hunting and actively discovers new computers that may have plugged into your network that you were unaware of. So you can turn on different features. Okay. So again, you know, why use it? It patching remains the single most important thing you can do to secure your technology, right? It's akin to closing and locking all your doors and windows. Um, and most small and medium-sized businesses do not know how many open doors and windows there are across their IT environment. It's confusing. It is, you know, we have all those headwinds we talked about, um, but there are tools to make it less confusing and to help you through it. So it will identify them, it will rank them, it'll provide instructions on how to mitigate it, and it can be extended across, you know, to add different features and functions. Another, um, another feature and function there would be USB drives, right? So we all have USB ports on our computers. Um, depending on your, your company and what your security policies are, you may want those turned off. Um, you may not want somebody plugging a USB drive into a business computer and having the ability to download documents and take them home. Um, or you may have a department only where that you do not want that ha happening. These agents enable you to do that. And they enable you to do that without turning off the, the power charging feature. So you can still, you know, you can still use the, the USB port to power, you know, an external drive or or an external something or other, um, but it won't allow you to do certain things, right? So, th so there's ways to extend it. Any questions with this piece? How are we doing on time? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. We're we've run over, but we still have a, uh, most of the audience. So uh, okay, we have good. another about five minutes left. So let's wrap that up. All right, so we can wrap it up now. Um, you know, identify the gaps and risks. That's what this is all about, is understanding your environment, not getting caught up in the details, um, trying not to get overwhelmed with the technology. And from a business perspective, figuring out how to kind of look at your IT environment, identify the risks, and identify the things that you're gonna take action on, because that's what people want. They want to see that you are doing something. No one can look at any one business out of the blue and say you should be doing this and not this it's it's unique to every environment um but they expect you to be doing something and certain things are consistent across different sizes of organizations such as knowing what you own and knowing what condition that hardware and software is that you own so things like that are are generic um and then I can end it here with the people processes and procedures that I'll just I'll just fly through because this is this is the the training you know what's expected of us what's ex you know mostly up until now what is expected is training and awareness right we we do fishing exercises teach people to be aware um, make sure people aren't in a rush when they're when they're doing X Y and Z um, but if you really look look at it deeper it can get a little more complicated right. You're expected to have your banking processes and procedures and protections in place. You're expected to have email security. Top level domain governments is your www.mycompany.com. And whether that's protected, um, you know, hardware and inventory management software. So there's all of these things. Um, and again, it's, you know, rather than getting overwhelmed, um, you know, just take credit for what you're doing identify who does what in your organization the best that you can implement processes and procedures that make sense don't do something just because you want to have something um you know to to fill out a form on 
on your you know, cyber insurance renewal policy, you know, actually start taking actions and, and getting things done. And, and my recommendation after talking to a number of people in a number of different technology areas re related to cybersecurity is they all point back to start with a vulnerability uh, agent, get them on your devices and start monitoring your, your IT environment at the device level that people use every day. And from there, you're going to build your conversations around what you find in there and what you can do better. And, you know, so implement centralized patch management, ensure that it's done regularly, routinely perform asset discovery so you know what's being used. Um, implementing a zero trust network architecture is a little beyond this talk. Um, but the, the point there is don't trust anything and assume that you are already compromised. Um, there are probably things already on the network that you don't know about. Um, you know, that's the assumption in zero trust is you're not going to trust anything. Um, and then start having conversations with service providers. You know, make sure that security is a part of your conversation with every service provider you use, whether it's hardware, software, et cetera. Um, make sure that those conversations are, are taking place and make sure that you know how it impacts your budget and so that you're making intelligent decisions um, based on risk profiles. So cybersecurity as a service is evolving very rapidly. It's one way to help you through that, right? Is you can get outside services to come in and help you with this. And you know, pretty soon, well, already we're seeing fractional CI, um, chief information officer services and chief information security officer services crop up because a lot of businesses don't have the the budget or the you know the resources to hire these people so you can get fractional service providers that will come in and whether it's quarterly or monthly you know whatever whatever level is appropriate for your business you can get people to help and that wraps it up so for right. it's just just as a thought here, so people aren't going to, agents aren't going to overhaul their cybersecurity practices overnight. But what's mm -hmm. one easy action item or short list of easy action items that people can start doing right now to help protect their business? Yep, the first is the assessment. And I would recommend a self-assessment to really just do whatever you can by your, uh, you know, based on some of the slides that I provided, do your own self-assessment um, from both a um, technology perspective and a business perspective. Um, because again, this is not all related to technology and devices. It's also related to people. How much, how, you know, what kind of turnover do you have in your organization? Um, you know, how quickly are you growing? Uh, some businesses are consolidating and taking things offline and they may not really take them offline. So, so doing the self-assessment is first. And second is use start looking into a vulnerability agent and getting it on your PCs and getting that level of protection where you at least know what the vulnerabilities are and you know, know the health and condition of the tools that are being used to run your business every day. That's great. And I have really good news for all the agents that have attended today's webinar, because if you're interested, Fritz is offering to do a complimentary initial assessment simply for being an agent of security title. So after this webinar, you're going to receive a survey and it will ask you um, your level of interest in that assessment. So just make sure you fill that survey out. I wanna thank Fritz for joining us today. Your knowledge, your expertise, amazing. Thank you so much. And I wanna turn this over to Drew Pallas right now, who's going to give you information regarding the next month's webinar. Hey everybody. Are you there? Okay. Hear me? There you go. This, this thing on? Yes, we hear you. Uh, good. Yeah, uh, Amy, thanks for taking the reins on this one. Uh, Amy and Fritz go way back, so I want to... Uh, Not that give. far back. <laughs> <laughs> couple you years, couple decades. <laughs> it's, it's important to maintain the relationships and it's important to have people like Fritz, if you have a, a great IT department, you know, hold on for dear life 
if uh, if you're looking, uh, you know, we vouch for for Fritz. Amy vouches for Fritz. Um, but as far as next month's webinar, uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and next month is going to be the marketing webinar of the quarter. And we're going to have Wayne Stanley from Bo Digital. I'm sure many of you know him. And we're going to do our best to help you create some content. Content is the big white whale of uh, companies promotion. We're going to try to do the daytime TV cooking thing where we do a workshop in, in real time from idea creation to actually posting the thing. So it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to do a live and uh, see what comes up. So great. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a good time. Thanks everyone. I hope I hope it helped. I hope it kind of helps kick start a new uh, you know a new journey uh, to protection and, and 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 help avoid some confusion out there. And I'm certainly available if anybody wants to reach out and just talk about this stuff. Um, there's a lot, and uh, hopefully it helped. Thank you, Fritz. Great job. Thank you, Drew, and thanks to everybody that joined us today. We hope to see you again real soon. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.